Hello people! Today we'll try to figure out what to do if you catch yourself snowballing, how to recognize that moment, keep the momentum up and close the game while ahead. Let's begin. The first and best indicator for a good storm time is the enemy draft. I believe most storm games can be good storm games with the potential of snowballing and being the MVP. So instead, we'll briefly go over how to identify a potentially bad storm game and those would be any lineup that features a wild card strategy like Last Pick Meepo, Arc Warden, Huskar, Broad, etc. Or classic counters like Doom, AM, which can slow down your game at one point or another. Or disable heavy enemy lineups where you'll be forced into avoiding team fights before you dump your hard earned gold into survival items. Or the draw or any other pushing strategies where most of the lanes get run over. But those situations are pretty much far in between, and if you're not a one hero pool idiot like me, you can avoid picking Storm into these entirely. So let's look at enemy draft in this game. Slark, one of the most useless carries to be playing against Storm, has no lockdown, takes forever to come online, and while pretty slippery with debuff drops and shadow blades, ultimately poses no threat throughout the game. Tony, this guy is extremely dangerous in the early to mid game, since if he can catch you alone and you're less than full, he can combo you down before you can use your BKB. However, becomes useless in the late game. Next is Bird. Does heavy burst damage, but has no disables and can be easily juked during fights. Jakiro can be nasty if he buys Yule's Rod, since his combo is almost as dangerous as Tony's, requires a bit of dancing around watching his skill usage. And lastly Magnus, who, for our intents and purposes, is a big fat creep who has a 50-50% chance of landing ultimates every few minutes. Now. While this lineup has some good disables against Storm, one thing they really lack is burst damage. Unless Tony and Bird get an opening on you, Storm can easily sit through a couple of seconds of disables and then safely zip out. Let's also take a look at our own lineup. You'll want heroes that can piggyback on your snowballing and fight early. Heroes that take long time to come online, like Spectre, who just collect items in the jungle or free lanes while spamming audio emotes as you make space. So here we have Bloodseeker, who is a great hero as he can run down lanes throwing ruptures left and right, setting up good initiations for Storm. We also have Rave King, who comes online as early as a blink, and your general supports, who you must not forget to thank for doing good job at Vision. I'm serious, love your supports. So yeah. Unless you or your teammates find a way to fuck up, this should be a good matchup for Storm. I've briefly covered laning versus Tony in another video, so won't go into much detail here. Shove lanes, keep your distance, maintain high HP, rotate jungles. Don't be afraid to self up if your health drops below 50% and you still need to dance around the lane. I've made this exact mistake and paid for it. Bruce Blood, thanks and have fun. As long as you maintain a high health pool, he cannot combo you down and will have to play careful until his cooldowns come back, giving you room to breathe. Selves are your friend here. If you played your cards right and Tony didn't stop you from farming, you should naturally come on top or near the top of the network thanks to how efficiently Storm clears waves and jungle. This is the first step that allows snowballing. Double kill. Blood on your hands. Over here now. Killing spree. Hello, this is Gabe Newell. Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill. Dominating, I guess. More than two kills, but less than four kills. Right. Ho ho! Double kill. Yeah! Touche! Ha! 
confront my stone. <laughs> Now we can think about itemization. Everything went as planned and none of the enemies became a massive issue requiring immediate answers such as use or BGB. In this particular game none of them have heavy lockdowns but they do have some burst damage so I decided to go straight to Bloodstone. It helps massively to maintain your momentum as it allows you to survive Tony your only issue right now throughout the mid game while also giving that sweet mana regen for aggression. Tower is under siege. Radiant bottom tower has fallen. Tony. Told you a storm was coming. This will come in handy. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant bottom tower is being attacked. Stupendous! Pudding pop! Zap! Killing spree! You it! And as soon as you receive your big purchase, in this case Bloodstone, in some other cases Orchid, you can finally begin to take over the game. <laughs> now, your game mentality changes a bit here. Before, you were aiming to complete your items in a timely manner and only join fights to clean up. Now you're the fattest fuck in the match and you must be the one that leads fights. Oh Let the fun begin! Mega kill. I'm over here! Ha ha! Radiance Middle Tower is being attacked. Over here now. They're unstoppable? That was unreal. Double kill. Blue the man over here now! Monster kill. Impossible kill. You had your Another responsibility of being ahead is that you'll have to bodyguard people who want to place wards or overextend for whatever other reason. Here, I could jump in with Rubik to clean up Magnus, but I know it won't be enough time until Tony ambushes me 100 to 0, so instead I keep my distance, looking all dangerous while Rubik walks back and Slark is afraid to pursue further. If you want to go aggressive, you should either have BKB or Lincolns to have enough time to pop someone then vanish. Otherwise, make sure your team can join you at moment's notice. <laughs> right here, I could go in and take care of Jakiro for extra gold boost, but I know Tony should be around, so I walk to maintain enough mana in case Tony does show up. If you got a fat bounty on your head, try to avoid unnecessary risky situations. Double kill. This is also where our lineup shines. Bloodseeker can scout out fights with Rupture, while Wraith King can tank the damage until Electric Mexican zaps into the battlefield. Over here now! I'm over here! Zap! Invisibility!
<laughs> there they go. Looking for me? <laughs> Stupendous! I'll take that. Ah, it happened again. Double kill. Whining my own. Over here! One thing to note here, between the fights, unless you're sieging high ground, it is absolutely okay to sit in the jungle or depush empty waves instead of going with the team. You're a global presence now that can join the fights in moments notice, so instead of taking lane farm from your other cores, just clean up enemy jungle. They can push just fine without you, and storm not being visible on the map is enough anxiety for some enemies to not even attempt to leave the base. You create space by just existing. Once Storm starts snowballing, it's pretty hard to stop it. Enemy supports gotta generate defensive items like limbers and yules, sometimes ghost captors to stay alive and there just isn't enough money for them when you control the map. Enemy cores can try to rush orchids or hexes, but your accelerated farm from bowling allows you to always be one item ahead, whether it's PKB or Lincoln's. Handy. Oh! Over here now! Double damage! Survived the infection? What died to this? You had your warning! Here I am! Eventually, net worth difference between teams is too much to overcome, and the throne falls. Over here now! Bottom tower is under siege. Top tower is under attack. Killing spree! A dominating performance. Double kill. Are you a spy over here? Dyer's top tower is under siege. Radiant's bottom tower is doing the attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom barracks is under attack. Where's the body? bottom barrack is ancient is under attack. Victory goes to the enemy. 